One thing that is for sure is that as I continue to attack these MRAP sets, the 180s for whatever reps I get, the less of a mental burden they're becoming. Uh, today, again, not the most optimal circumstances did work, all that stuff, I'm tired mentally, physically, just not ready. Um, I didn't have any anxiety. I just went, you know what? Yeah, it's gonna, this is going to be shit for the next minute, but tough luck. Let's just get on with it. That was literally the vibe with me before I walked up to the bar today. I got 11 reps today. Uh, just part of life. That's literally the overall feeling that I have right now. Just looking at the bar right now and how I felt and how I feel. The whole concept of this is making you tougher, I think is definitely true when it comes to the mental aspect. Uh, if you've never done an air set, then you do one, and then you know how tough it is. The second and the third time are probably going to become uh, nerve-wracking because you know what, how much pain is coming. But when this has become your life, you're like, this is just the, the way you live. It's the way things are done around here, type of feeling. So that's definitely a huge, huge benefit. I mean, today I got 11, uh, again, different sensation. Breathing was not too bad. The upper back was not too bad. But I had trouble with my core for the first rep. I don't know if you guys saw that. I lost my balance a little bit. You know, bar went forward a bit. And now I'm kind of like second guessing a bunch of things right now. The holds are definitely good, but I think they're taxing my core too much. And I reckon they're taking a bit out of me when it comes to the MRAP sets. I reckon they're costing me a bit much. So that's something to think about. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, maybe I'll. Do it again tomorrow, maybe I won't. Maybe I need to implement some sort of a solution to my upper back. And one of you guys, I've, I've got things that I want to read out to you, respond to some of this stuff. A bunch of you guys have recommended other things like rows and upper back work that doesn't tax out the core as much. So that could be a solution. Um, but yesterday's video, you know, I didn't respond, I haven't had time to respond to a lot of them, but I'm sitting here throughout the workout as I'm warming up and I'm reading it and, you know, use a, uh, JR6M3E1R, just a random username, uh, he goes, uh, people are missing the bigger picture. At least in my opinion, the main charm of this channel is that Ivan is just a normal dude like us. He doesn't do everything absolutely perfectly and 100% optimized. He just loves training and the process of training and figuring things out. Just my two cents. You know, man, um, that, is, that is it. Uh, that is really, really it. I'm just exploring this genre, this hobby, just exploring. Uh, I don't want strings attached. I want to be free. I want to be a free mind with this and have the childlike behavior of trying things out. Oh, look, this is really cool. Put it in my mouth. Choo, choo, choo. Oh, look, this is on the ground and dirty as well. I'll put that in my mouth as well. That's what I'm seeing my, my six-month-old do. Like everything he does, everything he touches goes into his mouth to have a chew have a taste, everything just goes in the mouth. That, that's his sensory system, the mouth. And then we stop to kind of behave like that as we grow older. And then at 35 year old, you're just basically going off recommendations by other people uh, that have experienced things and have written things. And you stop exploring. Um, and I feel like you're saying here, you know, there are not many things in my life that I can just freely do whatever I want. I've said this in the past, I can't drive the car the way I want on the road. When I go to work, there's rules and regulations, protocols I have to follow. I can't be myself. I have to do as the things are around there, right? Everything. There's everything around your life that is just fixated. And then people try and make this also a fixation of parameters and rigidity and borders. Don't like that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to express it. I'm not just doing this for the sake of being different. No, I'm genuinely having a philosophical discussion with myself in my mind with you guys about what the best approach for this is. And uh, yes, yeah, some of this makes sense, some of it doesn't, but the, the bottom line is I try to do things. And then Pink Supremacy jumps in this comment. By the way, 20 other people have liked this comment. 
Pink Supremacy then goes, yes, yeah, some who are new to the channel might miss that, but that's not always the case. We are just venting opinions on training and sometimes have different perspectives in regards to the most efficient way to hit high numbers. Without a doubt, Pink. Pink, man, you've been around for a long, long time. And always impress your input. You know, sometimes we disagree, but that is all cool. Like I've said it in previous videos many times over. My own blood brother, we had disagreements. We've had freaking fights like crazy, like crazy, about to freaking kill each other. You know, but that's okay. You know, I still love the guy, but that doesn't mean we have to be completely identical in how we think. Why can't Pink and I also have a relationship where we are, you know, butting heads about the best way to go about squatting, but yet we are, you know, we, we, are, we are rooting for each other. We want each other to be better. Um, I mean, Pink doesn't make videos, I don't think. Oh, let me click on him. Um, you know, he doesn't make videos, but, um, you know, I'm sure he trains. Uh, Oh, he's got a few videos. You know, Pink's got a, a few videos and whatever, but that doesn't mean we, we, we have to be enemies if we think of different things, right? Like, it's all good. You know, it's all good. And, and, you know, Pink has been really nice over the years and whatever. And I think that's, you know, this community should be encouraging one another to, uh, to experiment and then bring the results forward and be like, hey, dude, like, Ivana, I've tried this, this works, and this doesn't work, maybe it can fit into you and blah, 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 blah. Um, and then there's another comment which also, like, caught my attention by Flip Flop Chris. Uh, he goes, Tom Plads did 240 for 23 reps. The calculator equates that to 424, uh, 422 kilos. He topped out at approximately 340. For powerlifting, generally speaking, lower reps, um, reps lower than 10 work best. Just a thought. Love your thought process. And then on that, um, Dennis Thorson goes, except that was 184 to 200 kilos. The whole thing was debunked as a show. But yeah, reps don't mean strength. Oh, okay, I did not know that. Then it's, I thought it was really 240. I don't know. Um, debunked, uh, Watson Kushmaster writes, uh, question debunked. I thought some people just said it was no proof whatsoever. Look, I know a whole bunch of people have since tried to hit the 240 uh, for 23 reps and a lot of people, a lot of really, really strong people have had uh, trouble to kind of get it. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't even dream about that. I mean, that's that's an absurd number. You know, I don't think it's possible for even some of the most juiced people on the planet. It's very, very difficult because it combines top level strength and top level endurance, which is something that's insane because juice itself makes your cardiovascular system worse in many respects. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, you know, it's, it's a case of specificity, right? Like if you play indoor soccer and you get really, really good at indoor soccer and you focus solely on indoor soccer, you know, four and four, whatever it is, three and three on the field, that does that, does that mean if you become a really, really good indoor soccer player, you're gonna be really good on the pitch, like when you're playing the full 11 on 11? Probably not. Does it have some carryover? Sure, futsal, the Brazilian futsal has some carryover. The boys who are really good at futsal have really, you know, nice ability to control the ball in, in close quarters and whatever, but does that make you a really good reader playmaker when, when there's a pitch open? Does that make you caca? Does it make you beetle or does it make you, you know, it doesn't, right? But there's, there's, you lose specificity the further away uh, you go away from the rules and the rules in powerlifting is it's one rep. Here we are doing, trying to get 20. So it's getting further and further away, but that does not mean there's no benefit at all. I'm sure there is benefit, you know, uh, Tom Platt's top to 340. Uh, which is freaking, I don't even know how much that's, 700 pounds, 750 pounds or something like that, which to be honest with you is a very, very, very impressive total for somebody who doesn't do a lot of reps. Just think about that, right? You know, predominantly speaking, I mean, I'm not an expert on Tom Platt's history, but you know, he's focused on really super high repetitions doing 180 for 50 and things of that nature. And he's made, managed to, uh, you know, put up 340 kilos single. I don't know about you guys, but that's a pretty nice, you know, carryover. And then the benefit of that, which, you know, a lot of us might not care about, but I definitely do, is that while you're doing that one, you know, one set of absolute mayhem, you're training multiple different attributes. You're training your cardiovascular system, you're training your core, you're training many, many different things, your mentality. So just because, you know, uh, the best way to go about getting a one rep max is just seeing ones, twos and threes and fives and up to tens maybe, that doesn't mean there's no other path. Uh, if you ask me, sure, he's off for squatting 422, um, but you know 340 is really good, but you do highlight the importance of not relying too much on the calculator. 
you know, the calculator right now reckons I've got 240 in the bank. Do I really believe that? I don't. I really can't conceptualize myself getting under such, such heavy weight. Uh, but I'd like to think that I, it's more than 210. Surely it's more than 210. And so there is some benefit there. We can argue until the cars come home, you know, what the, the, the equation should be. But I think this is a really nice, nice result. Um, uh, Dab, uh, D-A-D-J says, I think it's always beneficial to train in different rep ranges. Now you're doing two MRAPs a week with 180. Why don't you split that into MRAP 180 and another MRAP of 200? I think there will be a lot of progress and it might be mentally refreshing to have a bit more variation. 14 likes on that. You know, the reason why I say 14 likes and 20 likes and all that is because, you know, these are the comments where I feel like a lot of people agree and a lot of people are telling me the same thing. Should I introduce a 200 kilo MRAP? Um, I'm not too, too opposed to it. I'm really, really not too opposed to it. Uh, right now, my, my whole feeling is just stick with 180s and ride it out. Ride it out. Um, this 180 for 11, again, I didn't hear the PR, but was it beneficial? Hell yeah. How many reps in reserve did I go? Maybe one, maybe, maybe none, maybe 0.5. That's quality. That is real, real quality. Uh, so maybe it's not carrying over the best to the one rep, but it's carrying over to hypertrophy. Let, let's, let's, let's put it to you this way, right? Do you think if I continue doing 180s for 10, for 11, and I'm continually pushing like really high RPE, maybe one in reserve, maybe 0.5, maybe no in reserve. If I do that for the next six months, do you think my legs grow? I'm not getting stronger, but do you think my legs grow? Do you think my biology starts to change and starts to try to adapt to, to this workload? I think yes. The bottom line to all of this to me is that it's the quality of the work that I'm putting through. I, I saw a really, really good, uh, a comment, uh, not a comment, a really good uh, philosophy. Um, I'm, I'm gonna put it up on the screen here so you can see it. And it so resonated with me. It's read something like, I mean, I should look it up here. I'll put it up on the screen, you, you, you'll see it in a sec. It read something like, focus on the effort, not the result. Lift me up like a light bulb. Focus on the effort and not the result. And I think the bottom line here the bottom line in all of this is that a lot of us are trying to find, including me, for a very long period of time, thing that attracted me to Bulgarian, really. A lot of us do want to find an accessory pathway to results without the really, really tough road, without the super, super heavy effort-based workouts. Because effort means it's going to be really, really hard. If I give 100%, on the AMRAP, that is hor horrible, horrible way to go about it. So we try to look for other ways. Oh, if I do five by five at 80%, yeah, it's heaps of effort, but it's not like the absolute, you know, ball busting effort. That's kind of cool, let's do that. Um, I reckon it was Seneca, was it Seneca? Um, I mean, I'm torturing myself here, but you guys will see, um, you would have seen on the screen, was it Seneca or somebody else? Um, focus on the effort not the result. I don't know about you guys, but that ultimately releases stress out of my chest. It almost like off, offsets it, makes me believe in a God. It makes me believe like I don't have to stress about all these things. There is a creator, there is God looking down upon all of us and he's responsible for all decisions and all repercussions. You just go about doing the best you can. That's the power of faith. And when you, when you say just focus on the effort and not the results, you kind of put yourself in that state where you just I'm going to come in here every single day, do the absolute best I can, and whatever God gives me is, is what, what I deserve. And that's it. And you just move on. And I think that's, that's part of the approach that I had in the last few sessions. Yeah, okay, I've been really, really stressed the last few weeks approaching the MRAP sets. But now I'm like, you know what? Come in, give it your best, whatever the number is, from 5 to 12, whatever, wherever you land. Just say to yourself at the end of it, I've given my best and off to the next day. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds really good to me. And if the philosophical minds of the past, if the wise men of the past have had any intelligence at all, any experience, um, like this fella here who came up with this, with this, with this statement, maybe there's something really uh, important to learn there. Focus on the effort. Don't worry about the, the things that you can't control. Focus on the effort 
and, and, and good will come your way. It's kind of like, you know, when, when I first started working, my parents used to say to me, don't worry about the money, just focus on the work, the money will come. Focus on the craft and the, world, the, the, the money will come. Don't obsess about money. Money will be a reward for your labor. That's what I get out of that statement. And I think that's the real benefit here. The mentality for me, the shift has been, enough of this shit where I'm sitting here for 10 hours a day, you know, stuffing around with like five reps in reserve and all this crap that I used to do, just volume, volume, volume. No, give me one set all out, get out of here and we're done. That to me is a beautiful thing. It really is a beautiful thing and I encourage you to change your mentality as well. Um, I mean, it's, it's a philosophical discussion at the end of the day. Like maybe you're in the midst of something completely different. Maybe you're doing something, what I used to do, which is like, the effort is really, really low. Uh, you're putting through shit ton of work and then, you know, you're hoping for the volume to initiate that stimulus. I don't know. For me right now, quality is everything that I think about and I reckon today's set was freaking high quality. I reckon it was really, really high quality. Anyway, guys, really appreciate you, like always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.